Hey guys and dolls, today I'm going to be sharing with you a hair dyeing tutorial and I'm so excited to be sharing this with you guys today. I love being able to share information about hair stuff, it's one of my passions. I have actually been dyeing my hair some shade of pink or another off and on for about 14 years now. So I do have quite a lot of experience with this hair dye stuff. I do want to say I'm not a hairstylist, I just do my own hair. It's fun and it's different, but I do want to say it is a lot of work. It's a lot of maintenance and, you know, bleaching your hair and putting colors in it and having to maintain it every few weeks. It's not for everyone. Dyeing your hair fun colors has become more and more popular in the last few years, and I've seen some really cool hair dye jobs, like, whoa, like, I am just flabbergasted by how cool they are, and I've seen a lot of things that are not maybe the best, and so I just want to kind of walk you guys through the process, let you guys know, you know, everything that you're going to need to do, all the things you're going to need to buy. I'm not going to lie to you guys, I even sometimes get, like, a little bit of anxiety when I'm going to go dye my hair, because I'm like, what if I screw it up? And I have had screw-ups in the past, and now I, I really have kind of, like, a system that I use. I really try to be super careful about this, that, and the other thing, and I want to kind of share some of that information with you guys today. I also want to share with you some information today about maintaining the color, because it, this is a little bit different from, like, a traditional hair color, whether it be, like, if you dye your hair brown, or if you dye your hair, even, I do dye my hair black, in fact, and we'll talk about that in this video as well but just you know it's just a little bit different of a dyeing process you treat you treat your hair differently you color your hair differently so just want to just talk about all of it get it all out there in one video so uh, sit tight kids it's gonna be a long one you might want to go get a little something to drink a little snack or whatever and uh, meet me right back here Thank you for watching my hair dyeing video please check out vintageortacky.com for more information and watch my other hair dyeing videos the dyeing process for me starts the day before I bleach it. I shampoo my hair to get all of the product buildup out, just to completely get my hair nice and clean, and then I let it get oily. I don't put any extra product in it, I just kind of let it hang out and do its thing and get greasy and all that nice neat stuff because the oils on your hair and on your scalp help to protect it during the bleaching process. This is really important, it's really bad to shampoo your hair and immediately bleach it. Sometimes it happens, but just when you can't avoid it, just try to make sure and really try to not bleach hair over hair that has a lot of product in it because that can cause weird chemical reactions. Just take it from me. I've been there and done that. The thing I use is a rat tail comb. This is great for sectioning out the hair. I will say once you get around to using the bleach, don't get the metal anywhere near because metal and bleach, they tend to have this weird reaction and results may vary. The next thing you're going to need are tint brushes. I tend to have four on hand at all times because I mark them, one for pink, one for the purple, one for the black, and one for the bleach. I just don't like to mix them. I just feel a little weird about mixing them. Maybe that's a little, you know, <laughs> a little obsessive, but I do like to make sure that they're separate and that way I always have one clean just in case I'm sort of dyeing my hair and I don't get a chance to actually clean all the supplies until the end. The next thing you're going to need is a whole lot of gloves, like more gloves than you can even think. What I actually do is I buy this big old box at Costco, and this comes in a three pack, so I'm kind of set for gloves for a while whenever I buy them. The next thing I can't live without is this little bowl from Sally's Beauty Supply. It's a mixing bowl, and it has these little teeth here. I don't know if you guys could, yeah. Yeah, maybe you can see it. So the reason why that's useful is because I'll have the hair dye, and I'm getting it on there, and then I can just squeeze and get, like, the majority of it off so I don't have like a big old glob and make a mess of myself when I'm dyeing my hair. You can also do something kind of cool and vintage. This is a rice bowl or maybe it's a teacup. I don't know. I've had this forever. I got it at a thrift store when I was a teenager. So I've been using this to dye my hair since I was a kid and it's kind of cool that I still have it. Next thing you're going to need is something like this to measure out your amounts. This is very, very important for when you do like, the bleach and you need to measure out how much developer you need. It's also important for when you do the black. Next thing you're gonna need is clips, clips, clips. So many clips, you don't even know how many clips you need. You need a gajillion clips. So these are just some fun color ones. The next thing that's essential for me for dyeing my hair is a handheld mirror. That way I can see the back of my head and be like, oh yeah, I am getting that straight because Otherwise, how am I to know? The next thing I need is a brush like this that doesn't have any like natural hair bristles or anything. That way you can get it completely oil free, which is very, very important when you're going from bleaching the hair and then it to putting the colorful colors on and we'll get to why that's important at the in the application portion. The next thing you're gonna need is an old t-shirt to wear while you're dyeing your hair. This is my Blink-182 shirt. I've had this again since the first time I dyed my hair. So this guy has been with me for many, many years and it's it's just become iconic for me. Like it has so many holes in it and I just, I love it. You don't have to have an old nostalgic t-shirt obviously. You can just use anything that you don't mind getting some of the hair dye on. I'm not gonna lie to you, I usually change after each application. So after the bleach, I'll put on a different shirt. After the, the pink and the purple, I'll put on a different shirt. After the black, I'll put on a different shirt. Just because that way I'm not risking getting the goop on me again. So have a few shirts on hand that you don't mind ruining. Hey, just go to like Goodwill and just pick up some cheap 
whatever shirts it doesn't really matter and then you're gonna need towels because you will ruin your regular towels. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> You're going to need some bleach. So I have here some bleach powder. This is the Prism Lights bleach. I get this at Sally's Beauty Supply. They also sell this in little packets, which are kind of holographic and pretty, which is kind of fun. This stuff is great because it has the toner built right in. And what the toner does is it stops your hair from looking brassy or yellow toned or something. So because this is a violet toned bleach, it helps minimize the appearance of yellow tones of the hair, which my hair tends to turn kind of like a, a yellowy. So I'm not such a fan. Out of that so I use this guy and then I also use a developer for that I use a level 30 developer some people feel like a oh, level 30 is too high some people go that extra mile and use a 40 it's all about personal preference I find that when I use a level 30 developer I tend to not have to leave it on my hair so long so that's my preference and it's not as damaging as a 40 and I used 40 for years and that was a mistake Moving on. It is hair dyeing day. I go ahead and section it off. And what I do is I section off the top portion away from the black and then pull the black back as part as like hard as I can and put it in like tight ponytails in the back to kind of get it out of the way. Now this time was a little bit different because I pulled a little bit of sections um, or I pulled a section in between the purple and the black. And the reason why I did this is because I wanted it to be more of a transition between the purple and the black portion of the hair. And as this hair grows out, the virgin hair will get bleached and it will be more and more purple until it's just purple completely throughout but in the meantime I have this cool like kind of transitiony plum color hair that doesn't you can maybe see how there's like sections here where you see it's it's almost black but it's kind of plum shade because underneath it, it's kind of like a dark red color you'll see called a soap cap through the pink and purple part of my hair to remove any traces of the color because I was going to be switching out the division of the lines where everything was. So the reason why you want to do a soap cap is to remove color in a less damaging way than bleach. What is a soap cap you asked? So a soap cap is when you mix bleach in with shampoo. This is going to weaken the bleach a little bit. It's going to make it less intense. So what I do is I mix it with this harsh shampoo here. I want to say it's not non-damaging. There's no such thing as putting bleach to your hair in a non-damaging way. But it's less damaging and it's a way to just quickly get some color out. And I do this every now and then just to clarify the color. Sometimes the colors get a little muddied and I just need to do this like every six months or so. 
After this develops, I fully rinse the hair out and then I shampoo it. And you want to really, really shampoo it. I usually shampoo about three or four times in the shower. And again, I use this super harsh one. The reason why you want to use a really harsh or I, harsh is a bad word, a clarifying shampoo, one that has a more of a pH balance. The reason why you want to use that is because it gets all the product out of the hair. You don't want any oil in your hair. You don't want any of the bleach left over. And it's really important to shampoo your hair to completely stop the bleaching process. Don't condition your hair because then it's going to have all these silicones and oils in it. And then the fun colors won't stick. And that's kind of the whole point, isn't it? Then what I do is I blow dry my hair and I blow dry it until it's completely bone dry. You need no trace of moisture in your hair. You want it to be very, very dry, and that's what I use the plastic brush for. So this doesn't have any oils on it, so it's great for blow drying the hair and making sure that it stays as bone dry as possible. I put a lot of emphasis on this because the drier you make your hair and, you know, the least moisturized that it is, the better this is going to stick in your hair and it's going to last longer. It's going to be more vibrant and all that nice, neat stuff. So I do want to talk about how these hair dyes are different from traditional hair dyes, like, you know, when you use developer and, and all that stuff. So the difference is, is that this is basically just pure pigment mixed in with different products that are moisturizing to the hair to help it coat the hair and help the color stain. Whereas with a traditional hair dye like my my black hair dye stuff, what this does is it, you know, when you mix it with a developer, it opens up the hair shaft and it will take some pigment out and it will inject some pigment in at the same time. So this is a little bit different in that it just coats and stains the hair. This is why the color lasts a long time is because you damage the hair first and then it stains on top of the damage. And it also gives your hair kind of like a shiny, glowy, healthy look because it's coating the hair and it, these tend to be kind of like light reflective. The colors that I use for my hair, for the purple I use Wildflower from Special Effects. This is a blue based purple. It is gorgeous. It ends up mixing with the pink and becoming a little bit more of a warm purple on the ends. This is my favorite. I will say it doesn't last. This is one of the most weak sauce purples I've ever found, but it's my favorite shade. I've used several. One of my other favorite purples that I've used is from Pravana, but unfortunately that one stains my entire body like Violet Beauregard purple for a week. The Pravana Violet also makes the pink part of my hair a little too fuchsia, a little too purpley pink, and that is not what I'm going for, which brings me to my next portion of this discussion, and that is what I use for the pink. Picking a hair color is actually part of the hardest part, and I want to mention websites like Hair Crazy or Amphigori.com, they have these galleries of people using various different hair dyes. And it's really helpful to get an idea of maybe what colors might be best for you or how colors turn out when they're used. Because people will sometimes give information like, this is used on virgin hair or this was used on hair that was previously this color. And it's just so helpful to get an idea because not every pink works for everyone. I've used some pinks that were real stinkers on me and I've used purples that really didn't flatter me. I find what's most flattering for me is this more like magenta, really bright pink, and then the more blue based purple. I find that when I use more of like the plummy purples, um, it's just a little, I don't know, the color just looks funny on me. It just makes me look kind of like ruddy in the face and that's just not a good look. I don't appreciate that. For many, many years I've used Atomic Pink, which is a gorgeous, vibrant, super hot pink just amazing color and it glows under a black light and it's so shiny and I love it and it's my favorite. Unfortunately, Special Effects is having some kind of distribution issue. So I will have a list on VintageYourTacky.com of some alternatives to this that you could use. So I haven't been able to get a hold of this color now for months and months and months and I was running out of my supply because I always tend to buy a couple just in case. And it, yeah, I've just been like freaking out like what am I going to do? I'm like, am I going to have to completely change my whole life? My whole hair color I decided you know let's try something new let's try something different and what i decided to do was mix a couple of different colors to get something similar to atomic pink and i ended up actually liking this combination better than atomic pink so go figure so what i've come up with as a concoction is a combination of cherry bomb from special effects and hot hot pink from manic panic now this one from manic panic the hot hot pink is a very fuchsia purpley pink and that's fine but i don't like that color so I like this one because it has that little bit of red tint. And so when I first dye my hair for the first couple of like week and a half or two weeks, it's a very reddish pink. I love that. It's such a pretty color. And then it ends up fading to this hot pink that we all know and love. And it's kind of like the best of both worlds. My hair is actually very faded. It's been um, a total of six weeks since I initially dyed it. Then about three weeks in, I did a refresher. And I'll talk about what I do when I do that in just a second. But it, you know, it's, it turns definitely a pink color after a while, but I'll have some photos here that I can insert. Initially, it's very, very red, and I like that. It's kind of neat to have this red pink, and then it turns into 
pink pink. The thing I like to have on hand is a little tiny spatula. I think I got this in the kitchen section at a hardware store or something like that. And this helps me to scrape color out of the bowl. This is really helpful when I'm mixing these two together and then I want to save what I have left over. Also one thing you might need is a little empty jar for holding hair dye. So and I did some stuff a little differently than I have in the past. I used to have this whole purple section connected and as you can see I now have a section of pink in between where the purple is on the side and where it is in the front section here. Now originally when I was dyeing my hair I thought I was going to go ahead and do the blonde root or blonde bangs like I have been doing and I think stuff actually ended up getting globbed on it and then I was like okay well I'm gonna fix this by just making it purple. Um, but I do want to talk to you guys about how I make it blonde in case you're interested. So because that hair is next to all these other hairs, it's going to end up kind of mixing with it a little. That's why I always kind of had blonde bangs that were kind of like pink tinted or whatever. But what I do to kind of stop that color from getting on it full Monty is I use a clear version of this vegetable base dye. So I use the Pravana Vivids in clear coat the hair with it. Sometimes I would even mix in a little bit of the wildflower color to give it a little bit of a purple stain. This has turned my hair a little too ash though and it's made it look a little gray in the past so you want to be very careful with that. The front section of my hair is, you'll notice, a little bit lighter than the sides over here. That's because the base had that clear coat on top and then I put the color over it which will make it a little lighter which is a great way by the way to make pastel colors is to mix it in with a clear color or you could also just mix it in with a leave-in conditioner or something like this. This works great for making pastel colors. You can always share these colors out make new colors like I always mix these two. So when I go to mix my pink, here's the ratio that I use. I use about four to one ratio of this, maybe even less of this color. So I really like the Cherry Bomb because it's that red pink. It has that vibrancy. I use the Cherry Bomb the most. So this is the main color that I use. And then I just use a little squeeps of the Manic Panic Hot Hot Pink, which is more of like a fuchsia pink, that purpley pink. And so I just want that to kind of like tint and influence this one, but I don't want it to like actually make a baby. Does that make sense? So I do this little front section first, and then I do the back section of the pink, and I apply it to the root first. I apply it from the root and then extend it out to the ends. And then once I was done with the pink, I went ahead and did the purple sides. I have a little bit of purple, I think, in the back as well. I don't remember what I did at the time, but I, you know, kind of have like a, the top section is pink and then the sides and the little bit of the back is purple. Now, in terms of the developing time for this, you can actually leave it on for pretty much as long as you want. This is, again, I want to say it's non-damaging. You damaged your hair when you did the bleach. That's what opened up the cuticle. This is just injecting the color and it doesn't do you any harm. I know some people who are like, I sleep in the hair dye and I think that's going a little far. I generally leave it in anywhere from, you know, half an hour if I'm super super busy and I have things to do that day or I'll sometimes leave it in for up to three hours but I will say that if I only leave it in for like a half an hour it does fade faster than when I leave it in for a full hour. When you go to rinse this part out you condition but you don't shampoo. When you first dye your hair you don't want to shampoo it for about 48 hours it helps the hair color to stick and then what I do is I use a deep conditioner. This one is from Wella. This is the Brilliance. It's actually made for color treated hair. I actually like this one, the Calm, better but this is what I bought last time, so I have both of them to show. I think the Calm one actually does a better job at maintaining my hair color, to be honest with you. The next thing that I use is black hair dye because my hair is not naturally black. In fact, you could actually see my roots a little bit. I'm sort of like a very dark ash blonde or, or very light ash brown, whichever you prefer to call me. I don't care. So what I use to make my hair black is black hair dye. I tend to use the more neutral shades of black hair dye. Every few months, I go ahead and use like more blue black because the natural base or like the neutrally black colors, they tend to fade fast for some reason. I don't know why, but the blue blacks tend to stick around. So every now and then I kind of switch to a blue black. I think that this one was actually maybe a little bit of a blue black. This is the Age Beautiful Anti-Age Hair Color, whatever. It was on sale at Sally's. I'm not very, very picky about the black that I use, to be honest with you. With that, I use a level 10 developer. I really like the Ion Sensitive Scalp developers I find that they work really nice they smell the best if developer can ever smell good Use the number 10 because I only needed to really deposit color so it doesn't really need to damage the hair as much so just a little brief history on developer the lower the number the less damage when I did the black portion of my hair I actually dyed it a couple of weeks after I initially dyed the pink and the purple and everything sometimes this happens sometimes I don't have time in a day to do all the stuff and it does take many many hours to dye my hair it's pretty simple though, I just section up the pink and purple out of the way and I like to dye the black um, after I've done the others because it makes it easier. I can just put it all up and then dye the black. What I do is I mix up the 
color with a developer mixy mixy mix according to the directions each one is different so I don't want to say for sure what you do and then I apply it with a tint brush and I apply it to the roots let it develop and then I pull the color through the ends that way it can kind of revitalize the black throughout the hair strands because it does tend to fade because my hair is resistant to the black fun times but it also like refuses to let it go once it sticks now in terms of developing this, you want to leave it on for 20 to 25 minutes, not very long. You know, you put it on pretty much as soon as you've cleaned everything up, it's time to rinse the hair. And that is how I dye my hair. Now I do maintain it in a few different ways. So what I do is about every three weeks I refresh the color as needed. Sometimes every three weeks I don't need it. Sometimes after two weeks I need it. Just it depends on if I've, you know, used some harsher shampoos, if I've gone swimming, things like that. So let's first talk about what you need to do to maintain your color. You need to use a sulfate free shampoo. If you can find one that also has UV filters, that's really helpful. My favorite is the Lanza Healing Color Care. I've used this for freaking years. It's my favorite. I love it. I'm pretty faithful to this stuff. And um, yeah, love it. Can't say enough about it. It has the UV filters in it. It's sulfate free. You don't need as much as you think you do. I really just put it in the roots of my hair and then sort of rinse it through the ends because you don't need to wash your hair, the ends of your hair as much as you think you do. Um, and then for conditioner for every day, I like the Carol's Daughter Manoy Repairing Conditioner stuff. It's pretty nice. It doesn't have any silicones in it, so it doesn't weigh my hair down because I need a little help because it's a little flat. Obviously not today. I got all the hair products in it, but you know, you get the idea. I've also been using the uh, Living Proof full line of shampoo and conditioner, and those are pretty good too. Um, I still prefer these ones though. The thing that you can do to keep the hair color vibrant is to use a clear coat on top of it. So sometimes when I go to do the black portion of my hair, in fact, I think I did it this time, I put the clear coat on the pink and the purple part of my hair to kind of seal it in and stop it from fading as fast. This is a really, really great thing to do. The other thing you can do is use some pastel shades to sort of keep them vibrant and add like a little bit of color without having to go, you know, full Monty and add some of these ones. So I have like this one from Pravana. This is the um, pink. It's very, 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 very pastel on its own, but it does a really great job of making this nice and shiny and pink again when it's gotten a little, like it's almost ready for a full dye job, but not quite yet. I go to refresh my color. I do not bleach it. You don't have to bleach your hair every time. You just need to make sure that the hair is nice and dry. So I'll use that clarifying shampoo, make sure my hair is bone dry. Don't put any conditioner in, blow dry it, and then I put the color in right on top of it. I don't do the black as often as I recolor the pink and the purple because again, that's not damaging. I can put that color in without hurting my hair. I redo the black about every four weeks, which is still pretty often, but the, the black, again, it's a level 10. It doesn't do a ton of damage and it's only on the bottom part of my hair, which is healthier than the top part of my hair. Just in terms of like my own personal hair, as I said, I did the whole shebang, bleached it all, did the whole thing six weeks ago, and then uh, it faded pretty fast, actually. Within three weeks, my hair was pretty craggy looking on the bottom here, and um, I did notice that it does tend to stay brighter here at the roots where the hair is healthier, and then at the ends where the hair, you know, tends to have more product. If you use a flat iron, you tend to use it more on the ends. By the way, heat styling will kill your hair color, so use it sparingly. I try not to use a flat iron on my hair at all, but I did a couple times this last month, because I had events to go to where I had to have, you know, super polished hair. Uh, and because of that, and because I went swimming a lot last month, my hair color just was like, gone. So I revitalized it in the method that I just described. And what I did this time to stop the hair color from fading, because I didn't want to stop swimming. Swimming's like my favorite thing to do. I actually started putting very deep conditioner, like caking it on, like tons and tons and tons of it, putting it in my hair to the point where like, when it dries, it actually is like almost hard and keeping my hair completely pinned up and out of the way and don't get any water on it as best I can. Some of it ends up getting on your hair, unfortunately, but I really tried to keep it out of the water this time. And three weeks in, my hair is still pretty darn vibrant. It's actually doing really well. So um, I'm very, very happy with the Cherry Bomb, uh, you know, Manic Panic mixture that I have going. I think it's a really great color. Um, this stuff sucks and doesn't last, but what are you gonna do? It's my favorite color, I can't help myself. And then, um, yeah, just keeping your hair out of the water will help keep it vibrant using the sulfate-free shampoos. I feel like I've been talking for about 100,000 years. I just want to say thank you for sitting through this very long video. I know it was a lot of information. It's just, you know, I wanted to get it all out there and just kind of fully explain it. It's, it, here's the thing about dyeing your hair. It is difficult, and there's a reason why hairstylists get paid. In fact, I think there's, in a lot of ways, they're underpaid because it's like science what they do. Um, but 
it's it you know it's not hard like calculus is hard but it is you are doing chemistry basically it's tedious you know it's tiresome it's a lot of focus and attention and things like that so you know it, it's totally doable if you if you have the focus and the drive the will and the heart you can make it happen. I also want to say I do have a tutorial for this look so if you want to go ahead and click the link in the description box down below I will have a link to this video. I will also have a link to VintageYourTacky.com or I'm going to have a list of some other hair dye colors that I think are great or just different ones that you may want to use because the whole special effects fiasco. Go ahead and click the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter and I'll see you guys in my next video. Remember to just be yourself. See you. Bye.